And this time, we we will push, we will push the police back in line. They're not going to come forward on us. We will push them back because they're going to have to open fire on us. And the rest of the world don't want, mate. The rest of the world, they don't want to see that. We've had no messages from any company saying we've had members with COVID on the sides. We, none of us have had, have got any messages that there have been COVID members on the side. Hmm. So now you're saying, oh, shit, 340 workers, 340 workers on 140 job sites have COVID. Oh. I still haven't got a text message. Do you know the uh, the testing procedures for these COVIDs are uh, basically PCR tests, as you know, as the golden standard. Now, they have been running those uh, testing standards at 40 to 45 cycles. Now, according to the World Health Organization, anything over 32 cycles has 0% accuracy. So all they need to do is turn up the cycles and they can detect far more positive cases just simply by doing that. So if they wanted to, nope. they, they could invent an, an, any number they wanted through this testing procedure. Oh, okay. and, and I think that's what they are, because the guy is putting fear in the people. Like this, this Dango, this, uh, the Melbourne Premier, Dan, I don't think he's realising the damage that he, he's actually causing, because at the end of the day, it doesn't bother him because he's still got a job. He's still got money coming in. And even if he was to step down today, step down today from from um, uh, uh, Premier, he's still got an income coming in. Hmm. You know what I mean? But me, I don't have an income coming in. I, I'm not going to look for another job. And being 60 years of age is going to be hard. <sighs> Where do I stand there? I, yeah, I'm 60 years of age. Uh, I'm a truck driver. I've seen a truck driver since I was 18. I, I've tried to work in factories before, but it didn't help. You know, like I like my freedom. I, li I like behind. I like being behind the wheel of a truck because that is where I'm skilled. That's my skill. Hmm. You know, yep. I'm skilled at that. And why, why are they making up all this fake? Is really like really like you know like and people are people are saying, oh look, you know. Uh, now, because of you protesters, we're going to be in lockdown even more. Well, I hate to say it, but Dan, Dan today on the ABC News said he is not now going to open up at 70% capacity. Victoria will not open up until we are 80% double jab, double jab, 80% now. Yeah. It fucking changes it all the time. Because why? Because he just wants to put fear in everyone. Guess what comes you after that? that? After that, it's double jabbed and the booster shot after that it's double jabbed oh, and two that. booster he, shots he, and then three booster shots he, there are cards he, circulating right now which look, have spaces for 15 booster shots that's what's coming yeah he, he's already announced the day that he goes even after you double jab you're still going to have to have to have booster shots passports not double jab passports he did say even after you double jab and you want to go on a holiday in 12 months' time, you will have to have a passport to say that you have had your booster shots. That's right. On top of your double jab. Another problem that comes from this is well, that there is a study that has come out of yep. Israel. Now, this, this study in Israel basically has shown that the people who have been double jabbed are 13 times more susceptible to any other strain of coronavirus. That means that they're getting sicker on mass. Now, when you get the booster shot for that for that variety, they're going to be more susceptible to the next variety. And so, what you're doing really is perpetuating an illness cycle. And there's no escape from that. Exactly. No, there's no escape for that. No escape. And and we'll, look, we'll, 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 we'll go back a bit. Uh, you know, like to back to New South Wales construction sites. So they 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 weren't under the hardest like the, the, the rules that we were here. Yeah. 
So it, and nothing applied to them. And so there was no real big fuss up there in New South Wales. I don't know why. And, and look, I'm really hoping that some of the New South Wales construction members come down to Melbourne on Monday the 27th and stand by your fucking Victorian mates. You know what I mean? We really need to support here because this is this this is the heart that everyone is watching right now. This is the heart. And if this heart can't stick together and, and fight this government, then the heart is going to die in everyone in Melbourne. You know what I mean? Mm. It's not going to be the same anymore in Melbourne. It really not. It's just we're divided Melbourne. Victoria now is divided, you know. And it's, it's a sad, sad place here in Melbourne right now. It really is. The media's not showing it, but the anger in people, the anger in people that have been vaxxed, the anger in people that haven't been vaxxed, you know, we're still getting told by people, oh, just shut your mouth and just go and get the jab. Well, there are people out there who would love to get the jab, but they cannot get the jab because of medical reasons. And it's anyone, any, anyone in your human rights act will, 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 would have worked red. Um, you do not have to do anything you're not comfortable with if you have a, a, a mental health condition. And that, that mental health condition covers anxiety. It covers depression. You know, them two alone can kill a person, you know. You don't want to put any more stress on someone like, you know. We had, we had two two workers on, on, on Tuesday, two workers commit suicide on the work side you know and yeah. how many more are going to do it absolute tragedy so it is you know and like i said from the start we did the qr coding now what what was the point in qr coding anywhere it, like hang on if if someone's got it then the government's got everyone's details from the qr coding then why didn't we get any messages saying there are five cases of COVID on your work site right now. Go and get tested straight away. Yeah. No one got a message, mate. I thought this was, you know, like at first I didn't want to use the QR code because, you know, the government knows exactly what you're doing all the time, where you're going, what job sites you're going to. Or well, why didn't us 30,000 members plus in Victoria get, get a message saying that, your job site has now got COVID. Please stay home, get tested as we deep clean the site. No one, mate, no one. And I'm telling you the truth. No one here in Victoria got it. No one. And I'm very angry about that right now. It's just a waste of fucking time to tell you the truth. Absolutely. Waste of fucking time. And now you're putting more fear. You know, who's next? Like, what's next? Like, you've, the government's used their all their options. They've thrown all their eggs in the basket and... Sorry, but you, you 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 just used all your eggs. Why Victoria? Why are you telling lies that it's it's now on, on the construction sites? Where's the proof? That'll be a very good it question to ask because while we're being told there's all these cases, there's very few people who have actually gotten sick. Maybe a few old people in hospitals. That's very sad, of course. Um, just like any flu season, we have people who perish from viruses. It's part of living on this earth. Yep. But when we give away the rights and freedoms of our society itself, we've just given away everything that our ancestors have built for us. We spit, we spit on their graves, essentially. Yeah. And this is the time yeah. to stand up, isn't it? It, it, it? it is. If we don't stand now, we will never stand to any rule that they throw at us. Because let's go back years ago, right? Let's go back years ago. We had the TWU union. You, you, you had the, the, the Builders Workers Union. You, you had all these little unions that were supporting workers in factories, you know? Um, when, I, when I was working in a factory, we had two reps. One was, one was um, your workers rep that every, every factory has lost now. Apparently, there's, they don't have them. I don't know why. So you would have your you would have your workers rep. So your workers rep would, would, would be your speaker on, on at the workplace. You know, that you, you had to have a work rep. And then after the work rep, they decided to bring out um, your safety rep on workplaces. You know, what, what is the point in having a work rep and a safety rep 
at the union won't listen to their workers. So after a while, that started to fade out because you could protest. You could go to your boss and say, hey, listen, I'm not happy with this. We're having a meeting. Um, all the workers have come to me. They're not happy. Uh, we're going to go outside and protest because we're not happy. We're not coming back to work. We're not leaving. We're just not going to work for the rest of the day and we're going to protest. Yeah, no worries. You could do that many years ago. You, you could protest outside your workplace. The government come in. I don't know when they brought that rule in, but they, they brought it in and they made it they made it mandatory that you could not protest outside your workplace. Well, why? Why? You know, so what, how can you fight for your rights then? If the government, so the government, I think what the government right now is doing is putting the pressure on the builders' workers' union so they can get the numbers of vaccines, you know, to make it look good for them. Yeah. We, we know the government paid out a lot of money for these vaccines. Like, you know, they fought out millions of dollars and they don't want to lose it, you know, they don't want to lose it. Well, guess what? I, I've lost everything now. I've got a car, I've got to return back. I, I, but next week, I don't know how I'm going to live. I'm not going to. I'm not going to have a roof over my head, and it's just, just not my head. Now my daughter, who has an, uh, an eight-month-old baby, how am I going to put a roof over her head? You know. I and I, like I said, you know, like I'm more focused right now with getting everyone. And, and I, I want to tell it. I want to tell Victoria. I want to tell Melbourne. What happened yesterday should not have happened. We condone that. We really are pissed off about that because if you do that again, you will not have to support other construction workers nor any support of any workers for you protesters. I told you, I told these protesters from the start, and I told everyone, even in our first interview, I said and I stated, just sit back, don't cause trouble. Just all of you is to sit back and wait for the construction workers to be walked off the job and then because we, 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 were, we were all going to go down to the union office we weren't happy when we march you march yep. you know what i mean yep. you've got your army yesterday yesterday if there were twenty thousand strong construction workers there the police would not have opened fire they would not have opened fire they wouldn't have dared to they wouldn't have dared to. Mon um, on Saturday, when they when they did they did the protesters, it wasn't nice. All right, so we know that they opened fire. What they did yesterday, before the protest even went to the shine, they went. I watched it on live stream. The riot squad come charging at the protesters as they're walking up the street and opened fire on anyone whether you're a protester or just a normal person walking on that footpath, they open fire on everyone. And, 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 and people need to hear the truth. It just wasn't just protesters. The police opened fire on everyone. And people got injured. People, innocent people got injured. One guy got shot in the head um, by one of the, um, the big bullets. Actually, Hitting that hard in the head, it, it has fucking cracked his head open and, and he, a lot of blood, man, a lot of blood. Like, wow. You know, police can't just open, open up on fire like that. So, you know, like, yeah. but if, if there were 20,000 construction workers there at the line, would the police have done it then? No, nah, no. Nah. Because a construction site, we just get annoyed and, and we'll just come at you coppers. You know, like, if you've got 20,000 construction workers running at the cops, what are the cops going to do? Gonna what are the cops going to do? We, we, proved it. we proved it Tuesday. We proved it Tuesday because we were protesting. It was a friendly protest, and it stayed that way. Look, we had the – we. I, I was on the front line. It was the, probably four or five of us controlling the crowd, to tell you the truth. You know, I'm only a little fella, and these, these people are big, but I stood my ground, you know, and – we tried to keep peaceful. Look, you know, like we, there were some young kids in the protest that shouldn't have been there. You could see they were troublemakers. You know, like nothing else to be there. Mate, they, they're, they're, they're probably the kids that the judge have let out from the criminal law, you know, from the 
they, they're probably calf thieves and all that. Like, what a good day to join, you know? Like, so we, we tried to keep it as peaceful as anything. So we went from the union side to the Parliament House. From the Parliament House, we went to Flinders Street. And everyone's like, oh, what now? So we're all fucking, we go back to, um, we go back to the union office again, I suppose. Let's go. So I took the lead again. We marched down there. It was a friendly protest. People were throwing bottles of water. You know, we, we condoned that. We tried to stop them as much. We can't control a large crowd of angry people. You can't. You know what? We, we, can, we can tell them not to do this. But at the end of the day, what they do is what they choose to do. Well, there I is can't a, stop that. There is one way to control an angry crowd. Don't make them angry. Don't make them angry. We're here to voice our opinion. And if we decide to stay here all day to voice our opinion, we will, you know. But as long as no one creates the violence, we don't want, we, 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 we do not want to give something to the media. We don't want to give something to the police to, to fire back at us. We, we, you know, let them fire the first bullet. Let them fire the first shot. And, and you can't open fire on unarmed people. You can't. That'd be like me right now pulling out my gun and 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 putting it at and pointing it at, at a copper. Yeah. He's gonna pull out his gun and he's gonna shoot me. It's no it's but about I haven't pulled the trigger though. We've seen protests happening in America where Black Lives Matter, where they were burning buildings, oh. smashing windows, they were trashing cars, they're attacking people. Now that's when the riot squad is justified maybe in using some sort of suppression tactics for the crowd. Now these are people who They've are simply it. raising their voices and showing the public we have a problem here um, and we're here to voice our concerns. Now that does not justify police moving in and attacking them with weapons at all. No, nah, no. Nah. Yeah, we, 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 on Tuesday, I stood, I stood in front of a cop and I said, listen, we're, we're not here to create trouble. We're not here to, to cause a war. We just want our voices heard. We don't want to hurt you which is the police. We don't want to, we, we outnumber you right now. I looked around, we outnumbered the police there on Tuesday. We had them outnumbered, you know? They had no idea that the numbers were going to be like that. We had them outnumbered. So I said, you know, like, if you open fire on us, this crowd is going to come running at you, you know? And you're going to get injured. Did you, did you come here today to end up going, to, to maybe end up in hospital at the end of this? Because obviously we didn't. We come here for a peaceful protest, and we don't. If you want to stand in front of us, and and, and this is the most stupid fucking thing that none of us can work out. Why the hell are you protecting the union guy to start with? Why this guy just bashed his wife, and he's now got charges laid, and you're protecting this criminal? He's a criminal. He's absolutely a criminal. He, he has been, many years ago, or in the past, he's been charged for thieving, pinching material from work sites for his own benefit, right? From his own benefit. He's, he's been pinching stuff. He, he, he's a criminal in everyone's eye at the moment. He bashed his wife. So, hang on, this is our leader. Like, if, if Dan, if Dan, Mr. Dan, if Mr. Dan was to bash his wife, and and it was all over the news. You think it'd be in it'd be it'd be who he is right now? Do you think New South Wales? If, if, you know, like anyone if high up that we all look up to, if they become a criminal, then we can't look up to you anymore. I'm sorry, but you're, you're a scum now. You're a scum. You're a dirty scum. Time <laughs> for you to stand down, up, mate. You've been in the union. You've ran the union for so long. Here's the unfortunate thing about our politicians right now is because they are in breach of federal law in some of these policies, because they are breaching Commonwealth laws, um, they actually are technically oh, are. criminals. And um, unfortunately, we have to start thinking about uh, what they we are. do about that. What do we do? Do we all band together in Australia as one? Do we stand as one? Not stand as fucking many, not stand for different reasons. We stand as one because... If this, if this is allowed to happen in, in, in Victoria and just Victoria alone, imagine when it comes to your state. And 
imagine when New South Wales have to have to abide by this rule. Imagine when Queensland and all these other states. Right now, all these other states, they're sitting, they're sitting back, fucking. They haven't got all these bullshit rules that we have in Victoria. They they haven't got these rules. Wait until it happens to your state. And what are you going to do then? Oh, fuck, I, I, I think we should have looked at Victoria, really, in the first place, and maybe stood as brothers, with brothers. Hmm. At, the day, at the end of the day, mate, we're all human. We all come from the same people. We come from the same mothers and fathers. You know, I'm, I'm, I, I'm struggling, but I'm, I'm, I'm keeping... I'm keeping strong because I want this protest on Monday to happen. I really do. I want this protest. I want as many down there as we can. Fuck the police. We roll up there at nine o'clock. Fuck the coppers. If we got the numbers, they're not going to arrest us. You know, we come in numbers. We just march to that joint. If you want, if you want to start your protest march somewhere else, cool. The more, the better. And just maybe we square off. That street, ourselves, you know, like instead of the police squaring us off, maybe we come from the north, the south, the east and the west in high numbers and we corner the policing. What are they going to do then? We've got you cornered now, buddy. You know what I mean? Just like the cowboys and Indians, you know, going around the fucking wagons. You know what I mean? <laughs> we got you. But... Yeah. <laughs> so, so, all right, the construction sites, I don't, I cannot see them coming back in two weeks' time, okay? So we've been shut down. The construction sites got shut down for two weeks. That was a very snap snap decision made by Dan. Very snap decision. Clearly uh, a reaction, was, yeah. not, not a health measure. It wasn't a health measure, no. No, it was a, it was, it was a quick thinking, let's lock down the, the, the construction sites. Let's not talk to anyone about it. Let's, let's not talk to... The construction members to see how we can keep it open and keep it safe. Well, I'm sorry, everyone in in Australia, but Victoria did show that it can be done safely. We did it safely. We did it safely for fucking two years. Why now have you closed it all down? Why now do us construction workers and truck drivers look like the enemy that the, you know we are the enemies so we're not the enemies we're not the enemy. we didn't fucking create this virus but we're suffering for it so you've also truck drivers who deliver all their stuff to the construction sites ain't working at the moment right so mm. now it's affecting them so here is the chain starting to happen now the panels, the panel joints, the panel factories that make all these concrete panels to go on all these business sites have now had to lay off their workers until the construction workers go back to work if they go back to work. And that is the biggest question on everyone's lip right now. Are they going to go back to work um, after the two-week lockdown? No. No. We're not going back to work. No. Because... There's more to the construction site that no one knows about. So here in Victoria now, the union, the union, the, the construction workers union have now said that after the two-week lockdown, you are to work six hours non-stop, flat, six hours non-stop for the day. So that's 30 hours a week now you will be working, not 38 hours, your benefits or anything. The Melbourne, the union now want all Victorian construction sites to come back to work after the two-week lockdown. You will work six hours straight, no smoke break, no lunch break in between that six hours at all. It is flat six-hour work. Also, on top of that, we're taking away your overtime. So there is no more overtime on these construction sites. And, and so this is the biggest problem. The news don't know about it. No one, know, no one who, who has nothing to do with construction sites knows about this, only us construction workers. So you're now going to take our overtime away. You're now going to reduce our hours. You're now going to take away our smoke, our, our lunch. You've taken away our lunchroom. Um, and also on top of all that, all that, also on top of that painful shit, you also want to, you also want the construction workers to take a pay cut. 
hang on, a pay cut? Hmm. We, our, our fathers fought hard for our, our money. They fucking, you know, like, they stood their grounds. They were real mean back in them days because they weren't scared. And well, they didn't have the police. They they didn't have the numbers. You know, so you could stand your ground. You had the right to freedom. You had the right to speech. Who the fuck took that away from us all? I like to I like to meet the main man. Who took it away? So, so as of as of coming out of lockdown for the construction workers, you'd be down to six hours a day, non-stop, flat out, no smoker, no lunch. Your overtime's now being taken away from you, and they want quarter of your pay. They want you to cut your pay to quarter. They want to take a quarter out of your pay. And just for our, right. just for our listeners then, on this, um, imagine for a moment that you were in this position where your pay just got cut, your hours just got cut, you had to work without a break, um, maybe your holiday and sick pay even like it gets diminished. Now, how would you react? Wouldn't isn't it justified that these Workers were, in fact, angry. It's gonna, well, they're, they're, they're more than just they're angry. They, they were very upset. What, what's the point in going and working on a construction site? I was just find a new job. You know, you just reduce my hours. But hang on, you want me to do the same work, but less hours. How do you work that way? How do you fit that in? You want me to do the same work, produce the same thing that I'm doing, but in, in shorter hours. All right, people say, six hours you know they've you work what we work eight hours probably 10 hours on a construction site oh they're only taking two hours off you every day what, what, what was it what are you crying about well we didn't ask for this we didn't vote for it we didn't vote for this hmm. and again it comes back to the westgate bridge it comes back to the shine these people fought for your rights they fought for your freedom the people on the westgate you know Hundreds of people died that day on the Westgate Bridge, you know, and and the union was formed to protect us workers our rights, to give us, you know, a good life to, that we could live. How are people going to live now? Like your pay's been cut virtually in half, so instead of taking home fifteen hundred dollars a week, you're going to take home seven hundred dollars. You know what I mean? Hmm. So, 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 you know, so you're not going to be able to afford the things that you've been able to afford because you won't be able to afford them anymore. Do you think that maybe you it's know? part of a plan um, for them to build more, like uh, more buildings far cheaper so they can mass produce buildings, just like we're seeing in Sydney right now, where they have independent building inspectors who are given the all clear for buildings which are dodgy and cheaply made and Basically, the standards just aren't there. Your standards ain't dead. No, nah, no, nah, right. You, you did set right there. There are some donkey people out there. Mate, they've been on the news. They've shown it on the news, you know, these donkey, these dodgy builders. And and, and a line, just a line in Sydney, how many apartments have now been shut because they're falling apart because of the dodgy builders? Exactly. Because the dodgy builders, the dodgy builders, they're not in it for you. They're not in it for your safety, right? They're in it for themselves, for the money. You know, if they can make money in their own pocket without you knowing the materials, well, let's get the cheaper materials. I can save hundreds of dollars and put it in my pocket. Who's going to know the fucking difference? Who's going to know? But until that, when they're building falls and, and then, and then only, Work safe come in and go, well, the the, the, the structural of this building is, is poor, very poor structural, very cheap materials. It shouldn't have been passed. But you slip a few dollars under the table, you'll get anything done. Absolutely. You know? uh, yeah. And New South Wales has shown that in the last few months. They've shown that. In Victoria, I think we're a little bit harder. Um, when the Westgate, when the West, this Westgate project started and, and all the tunnels and that, um, even, even the John Holland Company, John Holland Company on these projects in Victoria, the government ones, they were, they could get away with it, but in the end, they, they got caught out because workers, workers had enough of it. They couldn't go to John Holland. They couldn't go to the union rep because it's a government union, right? It's, 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 it's controlled by the government. 
So they slowly got the word out to some other people. The union came in and like uh, the workplace was unsafe. The workplace was totally unsafe. And, and John Holland thought he could get away with it until someone, someone blew the whistle. And the union came in, work safety come in, looked at the sites and go, you can't have this, you can't have that. Where's this? Where's that? We're shutting the site down right now. As of now, we're shutting the site down till you fix up your work safe areas. You know, it took one whistleblower to do that. It's taken one whistleblower in Sydney to tell the Sydney people, you know, these apartments, you know, they're, they're not made of the, the, they're not made of the material that you think they are made of, you know. And so when this building and all these people that pay to live in these apartments, you know, they're, they're for that, you know, a lot of money, you know, up to a million, maybe two million to live in this beautiful apartment. And now they can't live there because it's crumbling. The developer, he's not going to pay your fucking money back to you. He's gone, mate. He's spent it. It's just, you know, it's locked away. It might not be in his bank account, but I can tell you what, it'll be in one bank account that he can, he can access. You know what I mean? Mm. So he's not worried about you, man. Thanks, thanks for your $2 million. You know, I, I built your apartment. Fall down, but you're not getting your money back. You know, look, look what just happened in China. Look what just happened in China. 15, 15 um, skyscrapers, 15 skyscrapers been sitting there for six years. People, the Chinese people, you know, they paid anywhere from $14 million for an apartment to $2 million. Been sitting there for six years. Unfinished project. They only just knocked them all down not long ago because the developer can't do anything. He's gone bankrupt and he can't, and, and people are angry now because they've spent all this money and they can't get it back. You know, like, fuck. But right now, I'm starting to worry about what my future is now going to look like because I, I really, I, I'm going down tomorrow to see my boss. I'm going to see if I can maybe buy a truck off him. I don't think that's going to happen because he doesn't want to sell them. He just wants to take them all to the auctions and sell the whole lot in one hit, you know? What am I going to do, dude? I, I, I really... I don't think you're... As, I, I don't you're know. You're not as vulnerable. You're not as vulnerable as you might think because imagine if all those people that turned up at the protest, what if they organised more than just protest? What if they organised to actually get some stuff done together? Some uh, some new unions, well, I, so, some new standards, which they... Take, take demands to labor. Um, that, there's yeah, that's we've, a we've, lot of things that can be done. About, so, Star Trek strike, delivery drivers walk off job, right? Protesting out score, right? They stop the next, what's the next company? The next transport company that stops, and so on, and so on, and so on. You're not going to get your mail. Forget about your fucking click and collect. Forget about shopping online. Who's going to deliver it to you? Hmm. You know, this is what it's coming down to. People have had enough. They're ready to walk off their jobs. They've got no choice. You know, but how, how do you organize all this? How, how do you, how do you, how, where do we sit down with all these organizers and all these protesters? We all sit down at the same round table and we put it on the table. And then from there, we take it to Parliament. We give them a date, a deadline, to come up with a with a with a reason with a, with a reason, something that's going to work, so we can all get back to normal lives. We can all not stress about oh shit, am I going to have a job next week with what's going on? Am I am I going to have a job next week? What's going on? Who knows? But we 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 you know, like you say. If we if we're gonna go in for one, let's go in for everything. Mm. But when, how, who's gonna organize it? How well, we can organize it? Here's an idea. And any listeners, if you if you're feeling a very motivated individual, if you think that you can get this done, we need an Australian citizens union. All of us standing together, all fields of work under one banner. And together we can make under one serious demands from our government. Not not begging them. But telling them what we want. Can can okay, so this is Australia, yeah? 
It's it's just one bit of land. Is that correct? One big continent. So and Tasmania. <laughs> right. So so every state hasn't just fired it from the ocean and connected up to Australia, has it? No. Victoria, Melbourne, New South Wales, Queensland. It was all here prior to being called Queensland, Victoria. So it was just one land when it when when the first people come here. This is Australia. Oh, we haven't landed in Melbourne. We didn't land in New South Wales or Victoria. We landed in Australia. You know, like why why don't we just put up fucking big walls around each state and you do your own thing? You know, don't come in our side of the wall because you're not welcome. You just stay on your side of the wall and we should be right. Like like America and um is it Mexico or whatever? The Me Mexicans, you know, you can't come over to us and we're not coming to you. You know, we Donald Trump just built that big wall. Well, Donald, come over to Australia, Donald, because we need someone's experience in building walls. You know? Let's just build the fuck of walls. What about what about well, we go the opposite direction? Um, where we're not actually building walls, we're tearing them down. What about a dissolution of the states entirely? That, that would, one that, country that would be good, but it's one people. So I'm quite happy to start a new union. I really am. I'm I'm happy to start a new workers' builders union. I'm happy to start a, a new transport workers union. Why can't we just put the two of them together and just have one? Why not? One union does both. Why not? So yeah, in the next coming coming days, and I'll probably speak to you too because I, I you know, like I, I'm not the best speaker. I'm, I'm not the best writer. I'm I'm lost for words. You know, I'm I'm, I'm probably your most basic speaker out there. But when I do speak, it comes from the heart, you know. And um, maybe maybe I maybe I will start a whole new union. You know, I just I just got to look into it a little bit more. I try and get. Some people behind me who who will stand up. You know, yeah, I need someone who knows what they're doing on the construction part of it. Someone who knows all that. You know, it's just it's just going to be time consuming. Am I am I am I myself prepared to do this? Am I prepared? Yeah, I fucking am. Yeah, I am. I'm prepared now to do this. You know, and and I'm putting my own. I'm putting my own, um, I'm lost for the words here. I'm putting my own, my own life behind me and thinking of others. I should be thinking of myself, but I'm not. I, I'm putting my, my life behind me right now. I'm putting my life on hold. Everything that's going on right now with me is on hold. I don't know how long for, but I'm now trying to work out how I can help everyone. And I'm only a one person. Remember that. I'm like Pauline Hansen. I'm only one person. So look, you get this out there. Get this out there. And 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 please, if anyone, if anyone wants to help me with anything, can put me in the right directions, whether they be lawyers, workers, whatever, please. Um Maybe you can put my phone number down I'm, I'm, and my email address. I'm quite happy, mm -hmm. you know, and, and then we can kick it off. But yeah, for anyone looking after Wayne's contact details, I'm just going to pop those at the uh, the bottom of the video. So just scroll down there, and I yeah. will send a message to him and uh, let him know what you can do to help out. Yeah, yeah. I've told my friend, you know, like, all right. So, like, so today I've, I've posted a lot of things on the media, right? Channel 7, I've posted to them. Channel 9 on their Facebook page. And I'm getting a lot of feedback, some negative feedback, some really positive feedback, but I'm getting a lot of negative. And, and, and this is what I'm going to bring up right now, all right? This is what's going to happen soon down here in Melbourne when, when tradies are going to work in the city and the riot squads and the police are like, Hey, listen, 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 Colin. Look, there's a guy fucking dressed up in, in work clothes. Let's get him. Let's get him. We'll pin him to the floor, you know? We'll drop him to the ground. Where, and then we'll question him. Where are you going? What are you doing? I'm going to work. I'm going to work. What do we have to wear? Do we have to now wear us workers? Do we have to wear a clan outfit? Really? <laughs> do we have to wear a clan outfit? Well, clown, clown oh, world, oh, you know, you'd fit right in. Oh. Honestly, I can't wear this anymore. This 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 is too dangerous for me to put on. You know, 
These clothes that I have in my fucking wardrobe, I cannot wear them anymore. Why? Because they're too dangerous. You know? Hey, you I might as well go work there, Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, watch out. <laughs> I better write down, you know. Actually, I better go and put all my clothes in the rubbish bin, you know, because uh, I'm a terrorist, apparently, from what our union rep says, and Mr. Dan, I'm a terrorist. Well, I better go and fucking throw all my clothes in the bin. Yeah. People oh. don't see the real thing sometimes. You got people that live in houses, you got people that work in an office all day. They don't see the real world as they should see it. And they, they don't want to see it, some of them. They really don't want to see it. They, they, they don't want to hear from real people what's going on in life. And if I can see it, surely some other people can see it. I'm not the only one, am I? No way. But I'm not scared to speak about it. And if it hurts you, I apologise. It's... I'm a Sagittarius. Look up what a Sagittarius really is. We won't tell a lie. We speak the truth, whether it hurts or not. It's in our, it's in, it's apparently it's in our sign. We we speak we speak the truth, and if you don't like it, walk away. Just walk away. Don't get involved. Don't turn don't turn it into an argument, and then turn it into a fight. We didn't ask for it. We didn't ask for the fight. We just, we just want our voices to be heard, each and every one of us. You may have something different. You may not like what I say. I may not like what you say. Or something, oh, hang on, what you just said makes sense, you know? So now I look at it in a different way. But thanks, you just made sense. You just made sense to what I was talking about. Thank you, you know? Hmm. Uh, well, so for those people who are thinking about raising their voices, uh, all the tradies out there, maybe from New South Wales, maybe from Victoria, that it sounds like there may be a bit of a gathering happening uh, this, this coming Monday outside the union office. So maybe you want well, to turn up, maybe you don't, but uh, it could be a big event by the sounds of it. If, if you're involved in this, and really, if you if you're involved in what is about to happen, you know, and mainly the construction workers, New South Wales, you've gone back to work. They'll not jab. Jab, they'll not jab. You guys have gone back to work. Why? You've got more cases than us. You have more people in the population than us here in, in Melbourne. But yet you're allowed to now go back on the construction sites, the same material that we have here, and you're allowed to go back to work jabbed or non-jabbed. I don't know if they're, allowed, if they're wearing masks over there. I don't know if New South Wales has the same rules of mandatory um, with the uh, the Q code, the, the whatever you want to call it. I've lost of that's with the QR code. I don't know if you have going. I don't know if you had the temperature checks going every morning i don't know I, I haven't been told but if you are you you use are the lucky ones why can't victoria be the same why can't we be lucky like i said you know we've got all different states every state has different rules why 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 scott morrison you 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 can you confuse everyone of all these rules that you Pass and pass, pass and pass. No one knows what the fuck they're doing. Today, Dan, Mr. Dan said on the ABC News, someone um, brought up about um, the, the volume of traffic at the moment on our roads. Hang on, we're in lockdown. Are we not? We're in lockdown. Why are there hundreds of thousands of cars on the Monash Freeway? Why is there a hundred thousand cars still getting around on the Westgate Freeway, the Ring Road, the Telemarine Freeway. Where are all these cars going and get, coming and going all day? All day. But hang on. We are in a lockdown. They're not fucking workers. They're not workers <laughs> driving around the car. They're just normal people thinking, well, there's no cops around today. I'll jump car. Okay, we were jumping in the car. We're going from Geelong. We're going from fucking the north side of Melbourne, the west side of Melbourne. And we're going over to the south of Melbourne, down to the beach. We are, we're going to Rosebud, right? We, we, we have no roadblocks here. You know what I mean? We have no 
ring a circle to stop people from moving around. So how, Dan, are you telling everyone on the news today that you have stopped people from moving around? Bullshit, you have. Come and see the real fucking world with me. Come and see what I, what I post. Where are all these cars coming and going from? Some people say, oh, well, like they, 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 they more workers going to work. What, at fucking 10, 11, 12 o'clock in the, in the daytime? I'd, well, they're pretty late getting to work. I'd be just turning around going home, would you? Like, seriously? They're not all. Oh, so this family here beside me going past me in the car with him and his family in it. Hang on, he's going to work? Wait, gee, well, they, they, must own a, they must own a family business because the kids are going to what? Uh, are the kids are the slaves. They're going to work on the machine, aren't they? Oh, gee, that, that's good. Are we? There's no one, there's a thousand, and I'm not lying, there are thousands of cars still on the road right now. I think that we should take the Swedish model. No lockdowns at all. Use masks, sure. Maybe use sanitation, sure, social distancing. But they've gotten rid of everything else. No tracking apps, no no government controls on industries. And look at their case numbers. No. Basically zero. Basically zero at this point. Yeah. So why aren't we doing that? You know... Because the government wants to control us all. At the end of the day, they're trying to control us. That's all. Like, you know, oh, hang on. Everyone's got to have a, an injection. And like you said earlier, you know, like before this pandemic, the the amount of people dying just for the common flu alone. The common, well, if you look at the graph, there is nothing about the common flu anymore. It's just COVID, 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 COVID. You know, the, the, the people that are dying from the common flu, they, they're not recognised because if they were to say, well, the common flu is killing more people than uh, than, than this fucking deadly virus, uh, people, people would just keep doing their own thing. But if we put the Delta there, and like I say, the, 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 it, the virus might be out there. You know what I mean? It might be. And it's killing people because their health, the health is not up to scratch. Uh, really, um, there, there, there's someone sent me something, and I'll try and find it later. Someone sent me this statue of a rock, okay, of a rock. Hmm. And apparently, it's got it on there. <clears throat> someone predicted this fucking decades ago that the earth can only hold 500 million people. Ah, so we had to the balance Georgia, the population. The Georgia Guidestones you're talking about? That's the one. Thank you, Vic. Yep. Yeah. You know what? In all my life, I've never heard about that. And you got to remember, I'm as dumb as fuck, all right? I am the dumbest fuck as a truck driver. But yet I read that the other day. And I thought, fuck, that sounds about right. So, you know, like, you got to balance the world out. Otherwise, we're going to be overcrowded. We're going to be overcrowded. Right now in, in, in Melbourne alone, Okay, but we'll, go, we'll go back to the construction side of it. So right now in Melbourne alone, we're running out of we're running out of spaces to build new apartments, to build new skyscrapers. We, we there's just no more vacant places at the moment, and I'm just saying at the moment. So where where are they going to build next? So China's like, all right. Um, the the on the Footscray Road, we used to have the popular market there. You know, that's uh, that's where all the trucks used to come. In. So that's now been shifted to the north side of Melbourne. So the old marketplace, it's massive, massive land, massive land. So the Chinese come in and they brought that land not long ago. They they, they paid big bucks for this land. Apparently, it's going to be the new lock. Um, the new Docklands of Melbourne. It's going to be a, a new Melbourne inside Melbourne, if you right. know what I mean. Mm. But right now, the Chinese are not happy because they want to start developing on this land. They want to start getting, they put a lot of money into this land. But right now, they've been told by our government, sorry, we can't build yet because we have too much going on underneath. You know, we got the rail construction going in underground. We got the, the, the new tunnels that Melbourne are making going underground right near this site. So if if construction was to go ahead now, it could cause a massive big cave-in, if you know what I mean, mm. underground. With all this work at the moment going underground, going everywhere, 
if we build on top of them, the ground could the, the ground could give way, if you know what I mean. Hmm. Especially if there's earthquakes kicking around so right now. Yeah, yeah. Well, I've never, mate, mate I, I, was, I was shooting bricks yesterday. Don't you worry about that. I've, I've never seen this place fucking move so much in my life. I thought the windows were going to break. That's how, how bad it got. But anyway, it's not here today, but the problem is here today. So the, the, the Chinese are now saying to, to um, the Dan, well, if you don't let us start soon... We want our money back. We've already given you the money. Mm. We want it back. Or what? Is our government just going to open its wallet and say, well, here, here's your money back? I'll give it to you. Do you want it in cash or check or credit? You know? So the Chinese, the Chinese, when, when they asked if they could build more apartments, skyscrapers, um, I don't know who, I don't know the man's name. He said, no, no, no. Everything's on, on hold at the moment because we're running out of space so chinese developers actually went to the shopping centers like doncaster shopping center southland and and many more and asked can we build on top of your business on top of your shops and and doncaster like well good idea good idea but there's only one problem what would that be, Doncaster Shopping Centre? Our structural design is not designed and strong enough for, for a skyscraper to build on top of us. So for that to happen, we would have to shut down the whole shopping centre, big complex, we would have to shut that down and, and reinforce the strength to hold this. It, it can't happen. Mm. You know what I mean? It can't, it can't happen. Yeah. So China's like, oh, well, shit, shit. What do we do now? You know, because they, they want the heart of Melbourne. They, China, all their, all their skyscrapers, all their apartments are in the heart of Melbourne for their students. When they come over here, they can go to uni, they can go to college and whatever. That's what they were designed for. And these, these apartments, I'll tell you now, these apartments that are getting made right now, they're not designed for your normal Joe Blow, okay? They're very small apartments. They're designed for one person, one person. Mm. And and they, do, do you know what a studio unit looks like? Yeah. When you say studio very room. Very small little open. Well, that's what these yeah. are. Yeah. Yes, yeah, designed for the students to come back. So when we do open the borders again and that and international flights, all the students come back over here and we know China and India and that they, they flood, they flood Melbourne, they flood Sydney, they flood Queensland with their students, don't they? Mm. You know, so where are we going to put them? Here's so a question. They, Do those, yeah, they, uh, will those Chinese companies fly in Chinese contractors to build those buildings? They, they, they look, that's a, that, that will probably be another question to answer later on down the track, because I dare say like right now, uh, the budget here in Victoria has just blown straight out. So now, now the government's saying, instead of us losing um, a billion dollars a week, because everything's shut, now the government here in Victoria is gonna lose what, three, four, five billion a week in money. Mm. And where they gotta get that money to pay everything back? You know, we we still got a fucking debt with China as we speak. We, you know, we got a massive loan that we loaned from China. How are we going to pay that back? So China will probably do what they did to India and other countries. Well, if you can't pay back, we now own that bit of land. That's mm -hmm. ours now. You can stay there, but now we're going to build more skyscrapers for our people. Are they going to bring over workers? Well. That's uh, eh, that's on the tip of the tongue, dude. That is on the tip of the tongue as we speak. Eh, it's on the tip of the tongue. That's a very well-known like Chinese, uh, Chinese business tactic is actually to bring in like the roads plans and uh, infrastructure plans and they say they'll pay for it. But then they charge a little bit of interest and when a country can't pay it back, then they start taking over infrastructure. And we have to be very guarded about that. 
Yeah, very, very. And, and the funny thing is, if they did do it, we wouldn't hear about it really because right now, could you imagine the, the whole of Australia? Like, look what happened on Father's Day when Scott Morris left Canberra and flew to Sydney. Hmm. Why was he the only one in Australia that was allowed? Well, I'm, I'm sorry, Scott Morrison. You may think you got the power at the end of the day, but you don't. Because if it wasn't for us workers out here, you wouldn't be where you are today. Hmm. So we are the power. At the end of the day, we are the real power. We go to work every day. We put up with the bullshit. We get fucking shit money for what we're doing, really. And and you think you got the power? No, you haven't got the power, Scott Morris. We got the power. We choose this. And when, I'll tell you what. Come Monday, 9 a.m. at the Union office in Melbourne. Everyone, be there. Don't worry about the police. If you're worried, stay a block back. Everyone stay one block back from the Union site until the numbers grow, and then we head forward. And this time, we we will push. We will push the police back in line. They're not going to come forward on us. We will push them back. Because they're going to have to open fire on us. And the rest of the world don't. Mate, the rest of the world, they don't want to see that. You know? And and the construction workers, if you fire upon us, we will fucking come raging at you. Because we're not going to put up with it. We're not scared of bullets. You know what I mean? We, we, we couldn't be fucked. You know? But when you got fucking thousands of fucking angry construction workers and you're firing rubber bullets at us for no reason, we are going to push you cops to the ground. And if you get injured, that's bad luck. We didn't ask for it to happen. You provoked it. You fired the first shot. Uh, that's about it. That's about as much as I have to say on this matter right now. Oh, that's about it. I think Thank I'm done. I think I'm done. <laughs> that was an amazing talk. And Thank you so much for your time today. Um, thank you for your bravery about telling your story. And... Uh, well, God willing, we're, we're all in this together. And I think that uh, we're realizing that more now than we ever have. This is a rallying cry for us to come together in unity. And in that unity, we can create positive change in this country. Um, I don't think that, uh, yeah, we'll I don't think we're desperate. Fingers, I think that we're bad. maybe not confident, but uh, that confidence will grow as we see how many people actually are with us. Yeah, we we got to get the numbers. We got to build up the confidence again in all these people. And I'm just talking about the the construction workers. All right, look, this this is this has now starting to affect the transport side of it. This is the thing you don't want to happen because now small transport companies like the one I was working for, 26 trucks, 26 trailers. Now he's had to shut the gate. So that's 26 drivers now out of a job. And we're not the only transport drive, we're not the only transport company as well that are shutting the gates. The small ones is now shutting their gates. Tolls and all that, they can stay open, you know, because they're a huge, huge company. But the small transport sides are now starting to feel the because their work, they rely on the construction sites to bring the materials to these sites for the construction workers. Well, now, now that now the transport side is starting to feel the pinch, and 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 the small businesses are starting to shut their doors because it's not worth staying open anymore. There's no future in Australia. There's no future, you know. And people are scared. People out there don't know what to do. I'm not telling you to come to a protest. I condone violence. We know protest does nothing at the end of the day, but when you have an army, an army of hundreds of thousands, then the world starts to listen. Then the government starts standing up and taking note. Are they going to fix anything? They'll just go, nah, fuck the protesters. They'll go home. We come back every day, though. We're not going home, dude. And, and why don't we start camping out? Instead of like at the end of it, oh, we're going home. No, nah, fuck it. This time we come prepared, we bring food, we bring water, we bring sleeping bags. We sit this one right out. You know what I mean? That's sit right. it right out. Because hmm. if the government doesn't make money, 
off shops, shops, businesses, transport, then what is the government going to do? What is the government going to do then? You know, so really, people, we need everyone. We need everyone. And like I say again, I don't, I don't, I don't like protesting. I really don't. This is the first time in my whole life, in, in my whole life that I've, I've actually stood up finally and done something. And I feel proud about it. We don't condone violence, so we don't want violence. All right. I'm going to put it out there to all you protesters. No violence. Do not throw the water. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a funny thing. Do not throw the water. Do not throw anything to allow the enemy to open fire on us. Let them open fire first. And then, then, then throw the water at them because they've already fired the first shot. So really, in a war, if the enemy fires the first shot, what do, uh, what do the soldiers do on the other side? They retaliate and open fire. Is that correct? That's correct, and that's uh, legally as well. You have you have a right to um, equal force for self defence. You had the right to defend yourself. Now, when I went to court over all my life, with everything that's gone on in my life and all that, you know what the judge turned around to me, Wayne? You had the right to be angry, Wayne. You had the right to be upset. You had the right to yell. You had the right to protest. Yeah, but you do not have the right to open the first shot. Okay, you cannot do that. But if you're that's what I'm saying, hit them up because they're in right gears anyway, you know. But let's try not to bring the violence into this protest, let's just let the world see that we are, we are sick and tired. The more the merrier, mate. People from New South Wales, if you're working on a construction site and you're not working at the moment, jump in the car, the borders are open now. Get in the car and get on down here, please. I love you all. You know, it's been a very, 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 very wild ride, hasn't it, Bert? It has, yeah. yeah she's, uh, she's, she understands. It's been very well. And, I, and I've enjoyed yakking on so much, too. <laughs> uh, it's been wonderful. So, and thank you again. Beautiful. Uh, so, uh, we'll, we, I'm sure we'll talk again and um, we'll see how, we'll, how Monday goes. Well. And stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. All, all of you out there, stay safe. Um, and if you get into any trouble, maybe stay you're safe, surrounded, man. just sit down. Sit down, link arms. Don't even have to say a word. Sit down. Yep. Don't, don't. That's right. That's right. Sit down. Don't throw anything. Don't say anything. Just sit. Sit and be silent. But um, yeah, yeah. Silent protests so are some of the most here? powerful protests in the world. Yeah, don't look and like you you're you don't look like your loonies. You look like you're serious, no. very mature people who are making a point. Yeah, and you troublemakers, please, you troublemakers that come to the protest, please, please stay at the back, stay at the back line of the real protesters, stay at the back because if, when we tell you to open fire, then you can throw your fucking water bottles and whatever else you want to throw. But right now, let the people who want to speak without this violence, let them do what they need to do. Don't make it look ugly for us on the TV. Do not make it look ugly for us for around the world. The world has now seen that from this week alone, the protesters were very peaceful. People around the world were very happy with what we were doing yesterday. That was uncalled for, uncalled for. Keep away from the Shire. Our fathers, yes, they they went to war. They fought hard for our freedom. Let them have their, 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 their freedom. Let them have their resting place. Keep away from the Shire because you are only making other people angry at us. We don't need that. We're trying to voice our opinion. We nearly had it. We nearly had it until yesterday. We had it Wednesday. I mean, yeah. Tuesday, we had it Tuesday. People were listening. The, 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 the live streams that were going on, people were seeing the real protest as an unviolent protest, something we haven't seen for ages here. We were unviolent. Yesterday, you took that away from us people. You really made us look like shit. Don't do that. Do not do it. I know you're frustrated, you young people. I know you're just there for trouble. When 
if you want to cause trouble, stay at the back line until after we need you. Stay there, and then you can come forward, do whatever you want. But let let them fire the first shot. Don't let don't let, don't make us fire the first shot. Let them fire the first shot because the whole world right now is watching Melbourne. Is watching us. Hmm. You know, we 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 just yeah. Anyway, I'm, I love you, so guys. Uh, I'm in contact with a lot of people over in uh, over in America and all parts of the world, and they are right behind us, absolutely. And the whole world's watching. Oh, they are. So let's represent. Yeah. Let's represent the the, the the power, the fist of the power, guys. The fist of the power. You know, like let's bring back the mateship that we had. Let's bring back the mateship that was formed back when the Westgate Bridge fell down. Let's bring back the mateship we're not here to fight we're not here for violence we're here for a, pro a peaceful protest and that's what we want and if we have to do it every day peacefully we will but once you start damaging property once you start protesting on the shire us real protesters us real workers will walk away and you'll have no one to help you at the end of the day you got to remember that you know we came out Tuesday in force. Mate, I've never seen so many people in my life in the protest. We came out in force because we knew that the police could not push us over. The police could not push us back. They had no idea what we had planned. And walking around in circle like we did on Tuesday from the from the union office to the parliament house to the Flinders Street, back to the union office, and then from the union office, we went to the Westgate Bridge. They had no idea where we were going. No idea. You know, the amount of money that was wasted on on these police was just bullshit. You know, but we, we we had them confused. We had them confused. But it was a peaceful protest. So remember that, guys. Peaceful is what we're after. Peaceful. Uh, thanks very much, Wayne. Yeah.